Greetings everyone! Today's project is to build a new bench amp, or as I called this one in the past, abuse amp, because I give it a lot of abuse. Well, it's an LM1875 mounted on a socket board. And as I stated in previous videos, these socket boards are not ideal for building an amplifier. So I'm going to take one of these boards. So I got this uh, angle aluminum here. I'm going to mount it on like this. And I'll take this heat sink and mount it on the back. Of course I have to get standoffs. So it'll be kind of mounted up like this. The way I was using it before with a heat sink like this and you know it's just flapping around in the breeze by its you know the legs of the IC and it's it'll break off if I keep doing that so I want to get it done right so I want to try this method so what I want to do I want to make this this angle aluminum the same length as this heat sink so I'm going to mark it and cut it on my miter saw. Okay, so I have this cut. I filed the sharp edges down. Of course, when you cut this stuff, hearing protection and eye protection. Little filings flying everywhere. And of course, it's what I wanted the length of the heat sink. So next, I I'll get this centered on here, mark the holes, and I'll drill the holes, and I have to find some spacers and get it mounted up like this. Uh, get the IC mounted, then a couple holes for the heat sink to attach that, and really that's about it. Okay, we're coming along nicely. I drilled and tapped the aluminum. So I bought this tap set a while ago. It's very handy. I did buy another handle because the one that came with it is complete rubbish. And uh, drilled a uh, 440 hole. And I made some spacers from an old video cassette. These were like um, low friction guides for the tape. So I took those out and cut it in half with a very sharp blade. Then I filed them a bit to make sure they're all the same height. And uh, yeah, we're golden. Or should I say, no whackers, like Dave Jones would say. Okay, so I put two of them in and located the heat sink hole. And I'll get that drilled and tapped. And I'll proceed on with the uh, getting this heat sink mounted. Then, well, that's about it. This one little tip: I, when I tap the holes, I put a little uh, candle wax on there. And makes it go through the aluminum real smooth. Works really great. Oh, another little tip: if you don't have a way to mark the holes, just take a big nail center it perfectly on the hole and take a hammer and give it a good whack and no whackers you have a perfectly centered hole that your drill bit won't walk around when you try to drill out the holes now where's me ama okay I have all the holes drilled I did run into a problem even though I did punch starting marks in the aluminum larger diameter drill bit still walked on me so I had to uh, redo it again and drill pilot holes so with those large diameter drill bits it's good to drill pilot holes or maybe if you have a drill press you can certainly use that but no big deal this heat heat sink is starting to look like a piece of Swiss cheese with all the holes that's been put in it over the years so I drilled a clearance hole for the heat sink screw for the uh, LM1875. So now all I have to do is put everything together and it's done. And while I'm thinking of it, 
to get rid of the burrs on the holes I drill and tap I take a larger diameter drill bit and just you know run it in the hole there and it makes a bevel around the edge so it's nice and smooth okay we're all finished to keep the tab which is on the negative supply rail isolated from the heat sink I used a mica washer so I greased it up with heat sink compound on both sides used an insulating shouldered washer and screwed it in there I drilled a relief hole in this heat sink so the back tip of this screw wouldn't touch it and short it out or make contact and the position of these were important because I wanted to be able to drill the holes between the fins and tap it as you see there so that's why I had to I couldn't really use those other holes but this thing's pretty much done stuck some anti-slip feet on the bottom and that's it well I guess I better hook it up and demonstrate it or people get mad this is a do-it-yourself dual rail supply connected to the power port connected up a speaker and the music player and I'm not going to use copyrighted music anymore because the last couple videos I had to take them down re-edit get the music out that was causing the issue then re-encode the video and re-upload it no more of that shit so just do this <laughs> Okay, there you go. There's a little sample of it. Probably not going to put this in a case. It'll just sit out like the other amplifier did. Just use it on a bench for various tests, experiments, and projects. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.